Getting the timer started. It is one hour and 49 minutes into the day of Wednesday, January 29th, 2014. And we are beginning the vlog for January 29th to um, uh, January 30th, I think. Yeah, I think that's what's going on here. <laughs> I just made a slight mistake with the... One of the uh, listings for the video. So this is the BTS vlog for January 29th to January 30th. Uh, doing over two days. What had happened is that uh, obviously my day has uh, started shifting forward in terms of what I do during the day for uh, vlogging and everything else. Well, not for vlog, but the stuff that I do that I vlog about has shifted forward so that Basically, I'm getting up around uh, 3 o'clock, 3.30, and my day doesn't start till about 4 or 5. But if something happens in between, then I don't get to the first vlog until about 10 o'clock in the evening. That's where I was expecting things to happen. But what happened today... Was it the State of the Union, State of the Union dress? And I'm working on a new project. That okay? I'm gonna aim for Wednesday night, but you're not gonna see this because this video is gonna be up up later after. This video will probably be up after the news video go up. The news video goes up. So this is gonna. Uh, I'm working on a video for another channel. Uh, I'll give you the information for that channel. Uh, in a uh, Google uh, in a Google uh, Plus feed, uh, I'll do it through there, so you'll be able to see as I bring in new channels uh, that are necessary that are putting out, but my vlogs are behind, and I am behind again in my vlogs. Uh, if my vlogs are behind, when new channels come up that are part of the uh, Cyborg Alpha TV network, you're not going to necessarily know about them because they would have already occurred. So you'll see this in the feed. You'll get a notice in the feed that a video has gone up on one of my new channels. And as this channel starts developing, you'll get more and more feeds about this. And they won't not they they're not necessarily going to be in sync with the uh, BTS vlogs. And it because a lot of times it depends on how much work has to be done. This uh, next video that's going up is a news video. It's going to be on uh, the State of the Union address. And because of that, I had to watch the State of the Union address tonight, and that basically took everywhere. It took it started at around seven o'clock. The news the news uh, feed started coming in around seven o'clock in the evening, and didn't finish till about uh, just about one o'clock in the morning. So uh, that cut out that whole section of the day and pushed all, everything that I was supposed to do. Including ending the uh, BTS vlogs for um, for the weekend forward, so that now we're into Wednesday. Uh, but the thing is, is the Wednesday day. <laughs> let's see, it's it's almost two o'clock now. We're gonna be going till probably uh, three, four, and then taking a break and, and starting it again uh, uh, during the day on Wednesday. So in other words. Wednesday is going to be broken up into two parts. Wednesday is going to be this part now, because it's, 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 it's 1, 1 53 a.m. On, on Wednesday. Then it's going to start again on about 3, 4 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. In other words, there's going to be a break in between 
uh, where I'm not going to vlog, where I'm going to go to sleep and sort of try to get some rest. And it will go all night again. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it, what happens, it just does screw up the day. You, it, it, it not only screw up, it screws up the day, it screws up the sense of the day. It really sort of uh, makes a mess of how you see the day. Because uh, I'm trying to figure out when I'm actually vlogging now. I don't know really, I don't, can't, can't really grasp when I'm vlogging. Because I'm start, I'm doing vlog, I'm going to bed the same day I'm getting up. So I'm going to bed at, at, at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm getting up 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That's not one day to the next day. It's not, it's not going to bed, let's say, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night and getting up in the morning and st starting your day again. So you're having a, a, a separation between your days. There is no separation between the days here. And this is what causes the problem. This is what causes the confusion in time is that there's no separation in the days. And uh, it, it does cause a bit of a problem. And it does cause a bit of a problem uh, when you're trying to vlog it as to when you're going to vlog because you don't exactly know how the days are actually working out because there is not there is not a normal day there's no normal day here and yeah so anyways uh, what I was talking about in the last video because we're just now talking about my schedule is uh, I was talking about gaming RL and how several years ago I decided to see uh, how much you can take these role-playing games and sort of spread them out and uh, instead of playing as a uh, Dungeons and Dragons or, a, um, or or playing on a server like Yeovil or playing as they have in the league there for uh, League of Legends can you spread it out throughout the uh, internet and make it more comprehensive in other words turning real life into a game and this is for people who spend an enormous amount of time at the, at the computer so if you're a computer person, you're a gamer, uh, you, you spend an enormous amount of time at the at, at your system, at your console, and you might be wondering, can you do more than just your gaming? Well, yeah, the thing is, yes, you can, and you can treat it like a game. And what I call about, what I call, oh, every time I succeed at a particular issue, like uh, last uh, over the last few weeks, I've been trying to get. Uh, a regular episode out for Beauty and the Geek, and you've been to BST you tell another you've been to BST Unix at town, and the thing is I've been doing that. I got uh, the filming done, and so that means on a week to week basis things are going well, uh, and that means that this is what I call leveling up. And what you'll see this week is there's going to be a new, be a new schedule, and it's going to be more work, more research involved, and I'll be bringing in, again, another tough schedule that I'll have to level up to, I'll have to sort of adjust to. And I'll talk to more about this in the next segment uh, when I get into some of the research that's coming forward that you'll be seeing more of in here, and some of the gaming parts of it that's going to be coming in here as well. Anyways, I will talk to you in the next segment. Uh... I don't know, maybe a couple hours. All right, take it easy. Well, as they say, there's no time like the present. Like the present. <laughs> and, of course, there's no time like the present to vlog. So, let's get the uh, time and date stamp. And it is 18 hours and 32 minutes into the day of Wednesday, uh, January 29th. 2014. Yeah, this is our second time vlogging this day. Uh, I think it's our second time anyways. Before, it was, uh, I think, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't can't remember when, exactly when we did it, did this. Uh, but it was uh, into the day of uh, Wednesday. So this is, our, this, is our, this is our second Wednesday. This is the second day today. <laughs> and I got up around 4 o'clock. I got up around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh... The night was kind of weird and bizarre. It was very cold last night. We, we were in that, 
we're in that sort of that, that massive Arctic weather front, and I will be explaining more about this as we go along in our third segment, because our third segment is going to bring out the research that I'm doing in atmospheric research. So uh, we'll talk about that in the third segment. But in the, but in the second segment here, we will talk about Project Tesla and the electronics bench. Now that the Arduino has come in, uh, and I have the laptop on there. Now we can get started with everything to get the bench organized. And once the bench is organized, then we can start working on some Arduino projects, looking at uh, some of the uh, features with Arduino, and then moving it towards the meter project. The meter project, and this is what I need to explain, meters and standards are required in order to measure anything. Anytime you take a measurement, there's a meter and a standard behind it. And in experimentation, particularly when you're going into the unknowns, your meters and standards are, are extremely important. And one of the reasons they're important, let me just check this for a minute here, make sure everything's going okay. Give me two seconds. Because we are doing the laundry, and I just want to check the laundry to make sure it doesn't overflow. <laughs> We're back, and things cycled very well. I'm doing my laundry over there, and uh, I hooked the plumbing up a little different than I did last time. Uh, made some adjustments, some uh, repairs to it, uh, fixed things up so there wasn't as much leakage. I just wanted to make sure that everything went all right with it, and, and it, it went through its cycle all right. It, it did the draining properly, and it did the filling properly, and there isn't as much water leakage as, as there was before. Uh, the water leak, which was primarily in the sink, so it wasn't any issue. It's just you late wasting a lot of extra water, and I wanted to make sure that the water usage was more efficient, and that's what it is here. Uh, the more efficient setup uh, in terms of the water usage is is working, and uh, you know th this is this is part of uh, you know when you're doing things, you can either be wasteful and you know. If you're having, if you have billion dollars, who cares what happens? You know, you've got more billions coming in later on. But if you're trying to do something on a very tight budget, like say on, on hundreds of dollars rather than billions of dollars or millions of dollars, uh, then even the small things matter. And it's not that you're being environmentally friendly. Is this is what it takes to survive? This is what it takes to move forward. And the thing is, what a lot of people don't necessarily understand about environmentalists and environmentalism is these people are very arrogant and they're all I find in many cases they're very rude people too uh, here's the reason why if I've grown up and I'm staying in an immigrant community I grew up in an immigrant community I moved into an immigrant community they're all very conservative why because they all came from environments that they didn't have anything and in order to survive, they had to be very, very careful with whatever they had, and they appreciated everything they had. And the, the rule is, and this, my grandmother was the same thing, you don't waste anything. Nothing goes to waste. If you can find a use or a reuse for something, then you do that. You don't go out and buy something brand new. And this is the same mentality. It's the immigrant mentality that I saw growing up, that I saw in my community growing up. This is the mentality that I brought to research. And this is one of the reasons why my research facility in, in, in Institute uh, survives and has been around for about 20 years, even though I'm working only, only on hundreds of dollars to spend. I, I got like a hundred dollars, I spend, that's a good chunk of money. And, and, and if I can sort of whittle that down and get down to, you know, within the hundred dollar mark, then that's good, but, but, and if I, but if I have to sometimes, and just, you know, and I do go above occasionally the two hundred dollar mark. And again, it's, it's occasionally. It's not all. It's occasionally go above the two hundred dollar mark. And that's okay too, because you're not doing it that frequently. But typically, uh, my costs are now below a hundred dollars for whatever I need to get, and that's that. That's this is this is for the research here, and I'm producing the same level of of results as the big facilities are. So on on hundreds of dollars, I'm producing the same results that a facility on millions of dollars w would have done. So, and that's the other thing is, the key here is that on the electronics bench, we're building the electronics bench in this matter. We're spending very little on the electronics bench. A large chunk is coming from garbage, from uh, old uh, electronics, you know, the gar electronics that people have thrown out. And 
the initial lab, particularly for the meters and standards, is going to come from there. And then what happens is, and this is where you work with that, you get into with Tesla. Anything that has to do with radio is Tesla. So what you can do is, is that as you move your electronic skills up, as you move, uh, move your metering and measurement skills up, uh, and your understanding of that because you're building the equipment to do the metering and measuring, what you can then do is take the gaps in knowledge, the places where uh, the metering and measurements do not meet theory. This is where you want to look. These are the anomalies. This is where you know, want to say, well, maybe something Tesla had saw something, seen something in here. And is there something there? And you do a further investigation into that particular area where the metering or I should say where the metering and the measuring doesn't meet the supposed standard. You know, every time you look at doing electronics, the, uh, uh, a company will give you a standard sheet. They'll tell you how their product works and under what conditions it works under. And the thing is, is that you can w duplicate these measurements and st uh, these measurement uh, and these meters and the standards. You can you can reproduce the stuff. And if it doesn't meet up meet up to uh, what it says it is then it's either a problem with your equipment or there's a problem with the theory there. And the thing is, is that you can either, uh, you know, you know, well, what happens, not the either. What you do is then you go further into this and you try to find out where the mistakes are, where your mistakes are. And this is where self-analysis, self-criticism comes in because you do have to be very critical of what you do and you have to be very careful with that as well. So I said, we're, what we're going to be doing now for the next uh, couple of weeks is we're going to be working on the electronics bench here at some point in time. Uh, hopefully by uh, next week uh, I should have the bench in working order so I can give you a tour of the bench. I do have a project that has to go onto the bench on Monday, Tuesday, uh, but I don't know if I'll be, get, be getting to it then. But anyways, that's the goal. Uh, so now we're on to uh, segment three. This is a segment two for uh, for basically the uh, 29th of the 30th for this BTS vlog. The third segment we're going to talk about the OR vlog. This is one of the vlogs that are coming into the Insta vlogs and what it has to do with uh, atmospheric physics and climate. And the thing is, what you need to know, know is climate is not a science by itself. It's really atmospheric physics. Physics and the atmospheric physics itself is not actually, it, well, it is uh, physics, but it, it's more closely related to thermal thermodynamics. In other words, there's a fundamental science behind it, and you can match up what's going on in the atmosphere, and then and, and then then sort of comparing out with this whole argument on global warming with the fundamental physics. And if g global warming does not meet up with the fundamental physics, then global warming is a myth. No matter how much, and how uh, no matter how much, you say, oh, the discussion is over. And I think this is the problem. I find that the whole argument on global warming, global warming does not meet the fundamental physics of thermodynamics. There are serious problems with it. And so this is what we'll look at in the OR vlog. This is and this is why we'll, uh, I'll talk about the next project that I'm working on for uh, OR. That's the uh, the Oceanographic and Atmospheric Research uh, Institute. Uh, I'll talk about that in the third segment. Anyways, see you then. Back to my laundry. Back to my studies. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Alrighty, it is time for the next B next segment of the BTS vlog. You see, this is the third segment of the BTS vlog for covering. Uh, I think it was yeah the twenty eighth, 29th, and the thirtieth. Uh, let's see here. It is time and date stamp. It is seventeen hours and thirty eight minutes into the day of Thursday, January thirtieth, two thousand fourteen. Uh I was going to say, I was supposed to vlog earlier today, and I was going to say last night, but it's not last night. I was supposed to vlog earlier today, but when I finished, it was around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I was in no condition to do the vlog. I just really wasn't in the frame of mind to do it 
to function any further. And that's what happens sometimes. You go here until you can't function anymore. Ugh. And then whatever is left over from that day gets piled on to today. And we'll see how much we can get done today. Uh, to get everything done. Remember now, we're on, a, we're on the new schedule. The last schedule was the same thing. It was, you piled on as much as you could until you can get into a rhythm of getting everything done. So day by day, as you can get things done more and more and more, uh, then, in terms of working out your efficiency, then you're able to do that much more. And once you've got to a point where you're comfortable with it, give yourself about a week and then start piling on some more. And that happens, Just you'll see this about every two months, there'll be changes, there'll be adjustments uh, to the work schedule where more is going to be added. And in this case here, uh, one of the things that we're adding uh, on a more regular basis, basis and sort of bringing these things in, and that's the extra research that's going on here. Uh, and so, added to this, uh, uh, this uh, new schedule will be more Instavlogs. And in a variety of different areas, we'll have the OR vlog. The OR vlog is going to cover the OR Institute. The OR Institute is uh, the Oceanographic and Atmospheric Research Institute. That's OR. O R O A R. Right? O is oceanographic. A is atmospheric. R is uh, research. So the OR vlog will cover the work being done on uh, the project that I have on my desktop right now. It's called uh, Vert. Is known as a virtual observatory, or vir in this case, it's a virtual Earth observatory. And its goal is to start watching uh, and treating the Earth as a dynamic environment. In other words, rather than creating a model, you're using the tools and instruments that are already out there to sort of pick out the information, particularly the physics information, uh, that's there. In other words, you're studying physics, you're studying the uh, thermodynamics, and that's part of, that's part of physics that is in the environment. And if you know about thermodynamics, you know that thermodynamics often, uh, in many cases, uh, intertwines and interchanges with fluid dynamics. And dynamics is the physics. That's, that's your physics. It, it, it's the motion of things. It's the mechanics of things. Uh, and so what happens is that uh, when you're dealing with atmospheric physics, in, in, in addition to ocean, 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 uh, ocean, oceanography, Right, oceanographic uh, research. Uh, you're dealing with fluid and thermal dynamics. You're dealing with those are the two mechanics, those are the two physics that you're fundamentally dealing with in terms of how they flow, how they move, how they interact and interchange with each other. The oceanographic extends further because you also have to uh, understand the life that's within it and how the life affects the environment and how the environment affects the life. So there's a whole variety of things that we can get into here, but right now uh, the, the Earth Observatory is focusing in one particular area, and that what we're doing is uh, we're looking for, and I've actually found it, the ther thermodynamic inflows and outflows in the atmosphere. In other words, we're bringing uh, the thermodynamics uh, that we know in the textbooks and seeing what we have in the textbook for thermodynamics and what we have in real life in the dynamic situation. Uh, and that's the observatory I'm working on here. Is based off right now is based off of NOAA's GOES and POSE uh, satellites. GOES is the geostationary Earth satellites. Uh, POSE is the polar satellites. Uh, and with, the, with those two satellites together. Uh, I've been putting together composite composite pictures, composite composite Im images that eventually produce a movie, and these movies, these these uh, sort of uh, images, if they're put together right, you can actually see the thermodynamic inflows and outflows uh, within the uh, Earth's atmosphere. In other words, uh, you can see how when heat is put into the engine, a tornado or hurricane comes out of it. In other words. You're seeing the dynamics of weather. And as you're able to follow this, you're able to follow uh, how climate and weather shifts with each other, how, how they interact with each other. 
And uh, I'll give you a call back in a little bit. I'll give you a show back in a little bit because I do have something to do right now. I've got a phone call coming in, and I'll answer that phone call and talk to you in a little bit. All right. That was uh, a phone call. I just got back from the phone call. <laughs> Sorry about that interruption. But anyways, I was saying, uh, the work that's going on here right now on the, Earth's observ on the Earth Observatory, this is a virtual observatory. It's done through um, the Internet. And this was one of the reasons why I upgraded my research station, uh, the, research, the research desk, is to account for all of this. And uh, so that's, you'll be seeing more of this in the Insta vlog. I'll be giving you more uh, in-depth information in the Insta vlog. Because there is going to be more Insta vlogs coming out during the week. So we, uh, Beauty and the Geek is now in the editing bay. Along with Ubuntu Beastie Unix Tout, that's in the editing bay. So look for those uh, on uh, on a weekly basis. Now, just uh, I think I can get them out on a eight to nine day t uh, basis. If I, and this is what I'm aiming to do, because don't forget you have to go through the entire week, and then after you've done the entire week worth of research, you have to film what you've seen. So. Uh, these are basically week long. Ep these are week long episodes, so there is a lag time between uh, gathering the information and uh, f uh, doing the edit, doing the filming, and then the editing. Uh, what else is there? <laughs> uh, so yeah, look for. In addition to the beast, uh, you're about to be the unit of style, Beauty and the Geek. Also look for Insta vlogs. Insta vlogs is coming back on a more regular basis now. So uh, we'll talk next segment about the last thing that we're doing. The last new segment that we're adding uh, to uh, uh, the new, uh, to the, B, to, the uh, to uh, Insta Vlogs. And you'll see some of that information, come, some of that information, particularly, particularly the preliminary notes, come into here to the BTS Vlog. So, anyways, that's it for now. I'll talk to you in a little while. Yep, there is an assumption that I know what I'm doing, but uh, more often than not, I don't. Anyways, it's time to give the uh, time and date stamp. This is the last segment of the BTS Vlogs covering January 29th to the 31st. Well, into the 31st, because you'll, you'll see in a few minutes when I get the time and date stamp. That is now uh, January 31st. And, uh, we're ending our vlog. Okay, it's two hours and 42 minutes into the day of Friday, January 31st, 2014. Ugh, 2014. And today's events on this day on the calendar is the Chinese New Year. <laughs> Alright, so, Kang Hei Fat Joy. So, hello everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah, um, I said before that in the last segment talking about um, additions to the Insta vlogs, and this will bring some more of the research back to the desk here now. Um, uh, it, it, sort of connecting everything together, bring more stuff out. Uh, what happens is, is that you need to work on an efficiency model. In other words, that efficiency model lets you know what type of work you can get done during the day. Uh, is that I, I got to the point where I'm, I'm able to get an enormous, a good, a good amount of work done. Just I'm not able to get everything done that I set out to do. But there's hope that uh, in the coming days that things will get better and better. Because they already are starting to get better. But uh, they're not as... In other words, they're not as bad as before. Before, I would have some problems. It would knock me out for a couple of days, and uh, and uh, I get really far behind. Now, uh, I'm able to resolve a large chunk of these problems a lot faster than I did before. So, uh, it's not as uh, devastating. Uh, so, so it, the the new addition will be the, the bass will be in the bass vlogs. And BAS stands for Byzantine and Antiquity Studies, and that's another institute that I have uh, uh, here. 
that I do research in, and particularly uh, I look do I do anthropology and archaeology there. And believe it or not, as I said before, the, the, part of the the uh, gaming RL is uh, trying to see how far you can push a large chunk of this gaming stuff to. Uh, into real life. And what happens is because these, a large chunk of these games, particularly the role-playing games, have an enormous amount to them, including where you do have to study, you do have to know your history, you have to, you know, do a significant amount of research in them because they, these are geek games after all. Uh, so it's they're not going to be easy to do. But I said rather than sort of keeping things confined, the goal is to go out and define them in such a manner, the, the, the different things that you want to do, it, it, that one sort of connects with the other. And what happens is that the, is while, as I said before, uh, I'm doing the random walk, I'm doing open exploration of the universe, and while one could loosely say, okay, our archaeology and anthropology are, are, are intermixed, the second argument comes in when you're looking at uh, human behavior, group behavior. Uh, you can see a lot of this in archaeology and anthropology. And the thing is, archaeology is used to give you an understanding of anthropology. And so what happens is that all these things can be tied together and brought into the puzzle. But the thing is, is that that doesn't occur initially. What has to happen is you have to go out and find individual pieces. You have to work on sections that are not necessarily connected together. And right now, the, the puzzle I have, I've got bits and pieces sort of scattered and loosely connected, interconnected. What I have to do now is, and this is where what's going on now, is I'm going out and trying to bring in more order to the pieces that I have so that I can go in and start filling in more areas and certain gaps that I'm missing. And this is certainly true of uh, the, ba the Bass Institute, the, the sort of the, the, the looking at uh, archaeology and anthropology. Uh, one of the key points that you can look at in the Byzantine and the T Antiquity Studies Institute is particularly you're looking at uh, the, the Greek language. The Greek language, ironically, is an unbelievable language that that uh, that sort of sits in the middle of a lot of a lot of ancient cultures. Because at one point in time, or initially for a long point in time, the Greek language was the common language of, of the world, just the way English is today. You can go back and start studying a lot of cultures from the perspective of of Greek of the Greek culture, and see how one cultures one culture intermingled or intermixed with another culture. And you can sort of see the, the shifting of how, uh, not simply going back and looking at dates and times, but looking at how people would have lived uh, in different periods in time and diff uh, at different ages. And the thing is, you can go in and then try to find some of these texts. I mean, a large chunk of these, some, some of these texts are actually hidden because uh, it wouldn't be good for Western society for these ancient texts to get out. And this is when you talk about uh, these secret societies like Illuminati, like uh, the Jesuits, like uh, the Masons or something like that. Uh, you're talking about societies that uh, have or what they consider to be secret libraries. These are hidden libraries. These are secrets that only a privileged few in the society have access to. But the thing is that if if you go in and you start doing this research, and you start building these pieces well enough, you can start figuring out what's in these libraries because uh, as you can get pick up enough pieces and start putting the puzzle together, even if you have not all of the pieces, but a good enough of, uh, uh, enough of the pieces that you get together, you, you can put together a good picture, then you can sort of, again, an approximation, fill in the holes and gaps. With, with, again, what you think would more likely not fit in these holes and gaps. And one by one, you can start connecting and interconnecting all the different fields and moving back towards the round and walk and say, 
from the random walk, can I reach anywhere I want to go? And the answer would be yes. And then it's to say, well, how does this apply to physics? How does this apply to open exploration of the universe? And bit by bit, you can start filling in these answers. Anyways, uh, that's it for today. Uh, we're going to go into our weekend vlog in a couple hours when I come back. So I will see you in a couple hours uh, for the weekend vlog Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. All right, take it easy. Democratic Earth.